All right, all right, let's get this shit started. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the Ignorance of Strength podcast. Hope you all enjoyed our previous episode with Master Daniel Pessina, the original Johnny Cage, Scorpion, Sub-Zero, the original Mortal Kombat, right? But I'm back today with a brand new guest. I want to welcome to the podcast for the very first time. Uh, he goes by the name of Atonix. How you doing, man? Doing well. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, I like the I like that spelling. You know, I was asking you, like, hey, how do you pronounce this, right? I want to make sure I got it right. Uh, did you did you come up with that? Yeah, um, and I I knew that that was going to kind of be the thing. Was uh, most people when they read it will say auto next, but you know, I I get to kind of choose the correct way, and I think a tonics just you know has a little bit better of a ring to it. But yeah, yeah it's. Uh, so auto is you know self and next is like tied to or bridge or connected so just kind of that like interconnectedness to yourself is where that comes from hey well you know what it's a, it's a talking point man you know yeah yeah it's always, exactly it's always a talking point you know like uh it's like back when when prince just went by his symbols like what the hell do i do with this like <laughs> right right <laughs> People trying to figure it out. So, hey, when people are trying to figure it out, at least you're on their mind, right? Yep, yep, exactly. So you're uh you're 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 a Texan. Yeah, yeah, uh, new Texan. It's been here for seven months now. Yeah, yeah, I got okay. here. Uh, actually, probably about exactly seven months ago, we got here uh, October fifth. So, what uh what part of Texas? San Antonio. San Antonio, San Antonio. Mm -hmm. So where were you originally from? uh utah the salt lake area okay. so not, not too not too far right not venturing too far yeah i mean it felt far man that drive <laughs> that drive is is brutal i mean half of it is through texas takes you know like eight uh, or nine hours just to drive through texas for sure yeah no i always uh you know um anytime i have somebody from texas on now because you know i have a friend who, who moved from california to texas i always ask uh, people from texas how about how about that whataburger yep i it took me a while to try i actually just had it for the first time like two months ago um and i didn't go in with very high expectations and wow. honestly it it kind of blew me away i i think i think i'm a fan of whataburger well you, you had in and out before oh yeah uh, and, and, and I, let's piss some people off here uh, let's start off hot, right? What's the what's what's your preference? Ah, uh, that is hard. I feel like I still would say In and Out, yeah. and yeah, I feel like I uh, I might get castrated here in Texas for saying it, <laughs> but um, I don't know. I I mean, I also I do not like the fries at In and Out, and. I know it's like it seems like everybody agrees to that, uh -huh. yet so many people still like them. I I don't understand it. I mean, you, you put all that stuff on it, it's fine. But oh I, yeah, I, I I agree with you one hundred percent. I'm like, I found I, I found some undercooked green fries in there. I'm like, nope. Uh, yeah. yeah. Other other than fast food, man, we're here to talk about your music, <laughs> right? You know, and and uh, I, I I wanted to you know what. What, how would you how would you classify right what genre would you say your music will fall under oh man that is the question i have kind of just ended up going with uh experimental bass music mm -hmm. um, just electronic experimental bass music mainly because i really i'm i'm not sure what else to call it it's right. uh especially in this day and age where the lines between genres are blurring so much mm -hmm. you know i'm just i'm just making whatever comes out yeah yeah and 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 you know it's 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 hard nowadays like yeah to put a label on things right, right. because there's been so much meshing of, of of styles over the years and whatnot you know i i, I always like uh, i find it funny when i ask people hey which genre which genre because some people like me, it's just like, dude, it's just like, for example, if you're listening to like a rock song, it's just rock, mm -hmm. right? But then there will be people like, well, it's post hardcore sub, you know, all this other stuff is like, I don't know what the hell that is. <laughs> I, I'm like, if it, I just, I, I know what I like, right? Um, so, you know, it, it it's experimental bass music, right? Um, 
would you would you say there's other artists that that kind of fit like this mold this sound that uh you know you you kind of sound like or is it something that you're just kind of venturing into that's like brand new territory um i mean i think uh i i like to think that i'm getting into some really brand new territory just with you know feedback i've gotten of you know people saying like i've never heard anything like this which is the best feedback I can possibly imagine getting, which is cool to, you know, really be getting that. But, uh, you know, I really, I still very much draw inspiration really from anyone who is doing just very new different stuff. So, you know, Champagne Drip is finding a lot of success and he's just created his own sound. Um, there's Tape B who's on the come up, uh, just saw him live and he's got a very unique sound, really cool. So, you know, I, I'm definitely not the new one or the only one to uh, be going into, you know, new territory. And I, I think that's what's really cool about the electronic music scene in general is mm -hmm. people are a lot more open and really kind of want to hear something new, something different. Mm -hmm. Um more so than a lot of other genres, I think. I think most other genres, they get kind of caught up in, you know, a specific sound. Yeah. I mean, there's only so many notes, you know, you can put together on a guitar, you know, like I right. think uh, one thing that's always interesting, like when I go on YouTube and, and, and watch these videos where people think they figured everything out, they're like, oh my God, this song rips off this other song. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, it's not similar, right? I got similar melodies and everything like that. I'm sure they didn't rip anything off, you know, it's, it's, it's like, again, you can only string together so many notes in so many ways. Um, but I think the benefit of like electronic music is now that you have such a larger range, right? You can put different, you know, uh, sounds together and you can go a lot higher, a lot lower. Right. Um, and, and it really, I, when you're talking about experimental, right, you can really get experimental and get in there and do some stuff that is like, I wonder if anybody's ever tried this before. Right. You know? So what, how, how did you venture into, you know, getting into like the uh, experimental bass music? Like uh, this isn't uh, your first foray into, you know, music, right? You, you went under a different moniker before. Right. Yeah. So my old alias, um, I mean, it's always kind of been there. Uh, I, I think I've always just sort of created the music that just sounds right in the moment. Um, but I, I did try to fit into more of a mold, uh, before this, with this new project, you know, I, I'm really finding, um, how to make music for myself, which you hear that all the time. Mm -hmm. And I thought that I was doing that, but now I'm really understanding that like, it's, it's hard to make music without the motivation of, you know, I, I want a bunch of people to listen to this so that I can play on a main stage and um, or, you know, even the I want to prove all these people wrong that said that I couldn't do it. You know, when you make music for that, you're making music for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And I think that just really clicked for me of like, I need to make this music for myself. I just need to do what I like what I hear and do it to the best of my ability, not get too caught up on the audio engineering side of things, which I very much do. I, I uh, have a lot of insecurities uh, around that, but um, I'm learning to just kind of get past that. So just kind of came with the new name, just whole rebrand, whole new me. Cool, man. Yeah. Um, you know, when, it, when and I'm not too you know uh uh familiar with you know kind of like newer styles of music or you know um i'm still stuck in 70s 80s and 90s early 2000s maybe right um but i kind of hear and i listen to your you know your song surrender on youtube right um i kind of hear like elements what i say would i be right in saying it's kind of like you know some like dubstep in there and whatnot right would, would that be correct yeah yeah absolutely and you know, when it comes to my live shows, like I do like to still play a lot of, you know, I guess more mainstream dubstep and um, or uh, maybe not so much mainstream, but 
you know, falls within the sound. Mm. Um, so I, I still definitely draw a lot of inspiration from that. Yeah, sure. And then like, uh, the, the electronic music scene has gotten so big. I remember, you know, rock shows used to be the thing, right? Early two thousands, uh, you know, and, and, uh, as time went by, you know, I, I actually, one of my side jobs before used to be, you know, uh, bouncer bodyguard, whatever you want to call it. Right. And I would do a lot of shows and, um, it went from being a lot of rock shows to like a lot of raves. Right. And, and, you know, it, it, it's kind of crazy how, um, you know, how big those became and now they're massive. Right. You're talking about like, like EDC and things like that. And, it's across multiple days and people are spending thousands of dollars on this. Right. So it's a pretty big, you know, it's pretty, there's a lot of opportunity there. Right. Um, what are your aspirations? What do you want to do? I know you want to make music for yourself. Right. Um, but w where do you see yourself fitting in? Right. What's, what's, uh, what's the goal there? I mean, kind of the, goal the selfish goal i should say uh from day one has always been i really want to travel the world and uh that that kind of started out as my initial motivation to get into it was you know what better way to be able to travel the world if than like getting paid to do it and getting to go play this music that i love yeah um so world tour is always just kind of like that's my big goal um and i mean again that, like you said with the edm scene just blowing up and this rave scene blowing up there are so many different niches you can hit um depending on the show i mean house music is always going to be huge dubstep is really big in the u.s but now we're seeing an uptick with uh drum and bass and you know, it's it's just always evolving. So um, I'm just, you know, going to take whatever I can get. Whoever wants to listen is yeah, where I'm shooting for. And is is that like the style of music that you really grew up enjoying and, and listening to and going to concerts for? Or like, or do you have like a good mix in there? Uh, you know, it's it's interesting is uh, growing up, I was never big into music. Uh, I think my family really just wasn't super big into music other than my sister. My sister moved out to New York. She lives out in New York is pursuing, uh, you know, what wants to get on Broadway. Mm. So she's a lot more into like musicals and whatnot. But uh, other than that, you know, I, I just always listened to what my friends were listening to. Um, when I got into high school, I started, you know, I went and discovered My Chemical Romance, All American Rejects and all that for myself. And that's kind of where it started for me of listening to music that and like going and finding music. Um, and then uh, the year after I graduated was when I went to my first grave and it was like instantly fell in love with EDM. And mm -hmm. that's kind of where it all started for me. So it is weird. I just don't, I don't have much of a musical background. And, you know, if telling anyone from high school that I'm pursuing a career in music, they uh -huh. just like, no one would have seen this coming. Yeah. So, like, I mean, how did you get into like starting, you know, to, to call yourself a musician? You know, that's like you said, it's not really your identity. People don't really put two and two together. It's like, you know, how, how did that, how did that come about? Uh, so this is, 100% credited to my best friend, my day one. He's like a brother to me. I've known him my whole life, actually known him my whole life. Don't have a memory of meeting him because I've known him for so long. Uh -huh. um, but his his dad does movie scores and video game scores um, for Warner Chapel. So my friend had grown up learning how to at least kind of maneuver Ableton, help his dad with little things. And we started raving together. And um, he told me one day, hey, I just ordered a DJ mixer and I'm going to learn how to DJ and I'm like, I'm going to pursue this. And I had had the thought cross my mind before, like a couple months earlier, but I, I didn't really entertain it because, again, I'm like, I don't know anything about music. Mm -hmm. So like I, it just didn't even seem realistic. But as soon as he told me he was going to do it, then I started thinking, well, this would be cool. Can I learn this with you? Mm 
Right. So I was going to wait for him to get his mixer and uh, then ask him. And we were driving to a show, Zed Stead's show. Um, and he turned to me and he says, uh, I was going to wait until the mixer got here, but I'm going to ask now, like, do you want to learn how to do this with me? Mm. And we can do kind of a duo. And it's like, yeah, that's great. I was going to ask you the same thing. Uh-huh. So when he got that, we learned how to DJ together, um, just spent, you know, hours every day just messing around with it. Mm-hmm. And then he started teaching me Ableton. I got a little more into that um, until eventually I got my own laptop, got Ableton on it and just started doing it my own. And he has since uh, stopped pursuing music. He's pursuing other things now. Um, but you know, if it weren't for him, I wouldn't have ever started. And now this is, you know, mm-hmm. it's the, it's the only thing I really want to do with my life. Yeah. Yeah, man. And and that being said, you know, I always ask musicians, right? Because for some, you know, it, it's, it's like, okay, I do this as like a hobby. Some it's like, it's just a passion of mine. And then others like, no, 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 no. This is what I want to do, right? This is the path I'm taking. Um, But, you know, when it comes to that, a lot of people you know, are like, Hey, that's a pipe dream, right? Do something real with your life. Even, you know, I was, I was mentioning a previous guest, um, the guy who played uh, Johnny Cage in Mortal Kombat, you know, he's been doing this martial arts stuff and, you know, uh, uh, helping be like a stunt guy. And, you know, he's a video game icon at this point. Right. Even in, in his, I think what is it in his fifties or whatever, his parents are still asking him like, can you get a real job? You know? Um, so do you have those people that are like, Hey, why don't you do something else? Right. And, and how do you respond to that? You know, I have been very, very fortunate to not really have had a lot of that. Um, my dad has always been a lot more traditional. So I very much expected my dad to be like that, but my sister, you know, had just picked up her life, moved to New York out of the blue just because she wanted to pursue that. And my parents fully supported her. Um, But, you know, she also, she was older than me. She also very much had her life a lot more together at the time. Mm. Um, So I was kind of worried about it, but I started mentioning it. And, you know, to my dad's credit, he really came to me and was just, you know, so interested in asking me all these questions and has always been extremely supportive. Both my parents have and my whole family has. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, obviously I do, you you do hear a lot of it. And uh, a lot of it is just in people's tone of voice when you tell them like, oh, I'm a music producer or I'm a DJ Mm -hmm. or, you know, I'm an artist. You can kind of hear when people just like, oh, like that's that's nice. And they, they just don't really take you seriously, which used to really bug me and I felt a need to be taken seriously. And that's something I'm kind of learning again to just let go of. Um, But to their point, I think it, it is so easy to view as a pipe dream because it is a pipe dream. If you think that you're just going to make music, upload it to DistroKid and let it go out and do that for a little bit. And you're just going to start making millions of dollars. Mm. Like it it does take so much more than that, Uh, especially in this day and age where you can do it independently is makes it a lot more accessible, but it makes it a lot more work Mm. for you as the individual. So, you know, being able to stay on top of social media and which still learning that and Mm. learning how to manage your own business. And, uh, you know, I'm I'm to a point right now where. I I work from home. I'm essentially on salary. So I, I'm kind of my own boss, which mm. is everybody's dream. But with that comes a lot of responsibility of like, if I don't want to work, I don't have to. But like, you know, I, I don't have anything holding me accountable except for myself. Right. Yeah. And so, it, you know, it, it's a learning curve for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, and, and it sounds like, you know, there's flexibility, but you're, you know, the, what you're saying is like, there's gotta be that plan too. Right. right? So if you, you know, if you don't have a plan, it's kind of just like, you know, well, you know, here's, here's the dream. That's a right. Here's the goal. That's C and what's B right. What's right. in between, you know, there was like, ah, there's a 
old South Park episode where they talk about the underwear gnomes where it would be perfect for this scenario here, right? It's like, you know, A equals underwear. C equals, you know, profit. B, right? <laughs> um, but a lot of people kind of try to operate in that way just because, you know, um, I don't know, man. It might be a generational thing, you know. I, I guess I'm technically a, a millennial, right? I hate saying it. Uh, but you know, we kind of always have like this in back of our heads, like should be famous by now. Right. Right. <laughs> like, like, I don't know when you grow, grew up, but like, to me, it's like a lot of people have this, you know, uh, for some reason, this thought in the back of their head, like I should have been famous by now. Like at some point I should have done something to make me a celebrity or something like that, you know? Um, but it, it, it's, it's, it, it just doesn't work that way. You actually have to put in the work and you have to do you know, a lot more than a lot of people are willing to do, you know, like you mentioned the social media piece, man. I hate that part, man. Right. You know, like I, I, I kind of, I call, I'm just, I consider myself just a hobbyist doing the podcast thing, but I know every now and then I'm like, God oh, damn it. I have to post on Instagram. I have to, you know, post on YouTube and all this stuff. I'm like, okay, it's a chore, you right. know, it's a real chore. Cause you, you, you know, uh, for like for me, I, I people listen, they listen, right? But for you, you know, you want to make this your thing. Uh, I can imagine you really got to put in hours and 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 figure out like, you know, what are people gravitating towards, right? How do we get the eyes and ears on this, right? Even something as simple as like your branding, right? Like I I, I notice on your uh, you know, your album cover, right? You have a very distinct kind of, you know, that purple tinge, you know, you even have that right now in your background, right? Like you, you it must be like a favorite color or something like that. But, you know, it, I thought it looked cool, right? And 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 for the image that I'll put out for this uh, episode, right? It kind of played off of that a little bit. Um, And so I think it, it draws a lot of eyeballs in and that has to do, you know, with, again, trying to have a plan and attracting people is that I'm sure it's not by accident, right? The whole, you know, picking the right colors and everything. Right. Yeah. And, you know, that was sort of uh, my whole idea. Well, um, so Chrissy, the one that, uh, you know, originally connected us. So she is my business coach, essentially. I hired her specifically to help me with marketing and branding and mm -hmm. social media and uh, we had started talking back when uh, under my old alias and I wanted to hire her then, but it just finances were tight. It was just not a great time. Mm -hmm. And then when I decided to rebrand, then I reached out to her and I said, hey, like I, I want to rebrand. Do you want to help me build this from the ground up? Because I want to do this the right way. Mm -hmm. So fortunately, you know, I've had her that's just been coaching me and essentially, you know, she's basically become my manager she's mm. helps so much with uh she's been very hands-on with this and it, it's been it's been a lot of fun because it really feels like she's just kind of my teammate helping yeah. me with it so um definitely been a lot more uh planned um and you know it's i've been doing a lot more of it uh myself like I've, i'm finally learning how to use like canva and CapCut and Wow. learning that I don't have to outsource everything. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is like much more like DIY these days, you know, like I think anybody who's putting any sort of content out there, you kind of have to be a Jack of all trades. Right. I, I, I didn't know I was a graphic designer till I had to be, you know, I, I, I think uh, that's, that's something it's, it's a skill that a lot of people are picking up, you know, like uh, because if you notice too, like it's, it's kind of by necessity too, like when, uh, the pandemic hit, right? And everybody was locked up at home and whatnot. I don't know if you noticed, but everybody became a podcaster. Everybody became a, you know, a, a, a person that was uh, selling food from home. Everybody became, you know, some sort of entrepreneur, right? And and you start seeing their logos pop up, right? Um, and that's cool, man. That's cool, you know, because it, it, it makes it more personal, makes it your thing, and it seems more authentic, right? Um, and that's always a, that's always a good thing. Um, cause you feel it more, you know? I am. And, and so, um, with, with, with that being said, right. Um, what's, what's some feedback you've gotten from, from, you know, from people as you're venturing into this, right. I mean, like what kind of support have you received? Um, I mean, again, all 
more support than I feel like I deserve a lot of times. Um, my family's always been huge uh, support. I've always been blessed to uh, be surrounded by other creatives, you know, moving out here. Uh, we rented this house. Um, I'm here with, moved out here with three of my friends. One of them has since had to move back to Salt Lake, but, mm. um, you know, the, the, the other three of us were, you know, they both rap. Um, they're both getting more into singing, which is fun that we're, mm -hmm. uh, experimenting more with that. So I've always been surrounded by other creatives and people that I can bounce ideas off of. Um, but you know, it's, uh, b before, um, I, I was part of a, an artist collective. That's how I met these guys originally. Um, mm -hmm. and that was when I very first got into the music and like all these other people that I was working with had been doing music for years at that point. So I always had other people to kind of go off of, learn from, they were sort of the Guinea pigs. And, um, now that I've, you know, separated myself from that and I'm a lot more uh independent. And now it's like these guys I think uh look to me more of how are you doing it? Um and that that's just more so because I did start finding um you know a little bit of success with my last alias. And so I kind of have an idea of that. And again, I've hired a coach and um, learning all these things. So I'm sharing those resources, but, uh, you know, it's, it's been interesting learning how to essentially support myself and have to, again, be my own boss and learn it and fail and learn from my failures. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you gotta take, you know, those bruises and get back up. Right. Um, cause sometimes, you know, you need a little bit of reality to hit you in the face. Right. Um, you got to know what works and what doesn't and whatnot. Um, and, and, and so sometimes it's like, well, you, because you are taking on a lot of the, you know, like doing your own, you know, like logos and, 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 and all that stuff, logos or, or like visuals and things like that. It, it, you're like, Oh, this is cool. It's the best thing ever. And if maybe somebody gives you some feedback, ah, it's not that great. You might want to take, you might take it a little more personally. Right. But I, I think, uh, you know, it, 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 it also gives you an opportunity to be like, okay, I, you know, I, I, I accept that. It was kind of like the first pancake, right? I tried cooking that first pancake. It sucked, right? It wasn't all the way through. It was too mushy or, or it was burnt, right? Um, so you, you kind of get in this, like, let me try again. Let me try again. Let me reinvent. Let me reinvent. And you've kind of seen that again, because now again, you're, you're going by, you know, a, a different, you know, uh, moniker and everything, right? You're starting over. Um, and so that's, that's cool to see, you know, um, but with, with, with that, you know, with changing, uh, what, what was your former, I mean, if you don't mind talking about what was your name or, or alias? Yeah, it was, uh, four eyes, four I Z. Hmm. So, um, yeah, I, uh, the kind of quick story behind that. I real quick, but, though, I like a tonics better, but go yeah, ahead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I do too. And I, I mean, honestly, it also kind of comes with uh, like four eyes was because I didn't feel like people took me seriously, then it was almost my way of like beating them to the punchline of, you know, mm. oh, I'm I'm making fun of myself. Um, but it, it also very much was kind of accepting, you know, my own flaws that I had no control over because my, you know, I, I have not great eyesight. I hated glasses when I was a kid because I felt like I got bullied, which probably was not as bad as I made it up in my head. I'm realizing this years later. Mm -hmm. um, and I did contacts for a while, but they just, oh, I hate contacts. They just ruin your eyes. Mm. And, um, you know, one day while I was producing, I just realized like, man, I am breaking my back, just getting right up as close to the screen as I can, just so I can see like, I don't need to do this. Like, I don't have a problem wearing glasses anymore. Mm. Like, I, like, I don't care. Like, I just need to see. So got glasses. And then I just kind of created my whole identity around it for that. Um, yeah, but... see, that's what I'm talking about. You know, you probably at some point thought like, oh, four eyes is the coolest thing ever. Right? Oh, yeah. This is so great. And and maybe you got some feedback and, and it's like, what the hell? Like, I thought this was good. 
no, this is great. And you're in your head, you probably, you know, maybe very briefly, maybe struggled with that. Like, I, I can't believe this. this is, you know, I, you're wrong. I'm right. You know, um, but that's what I'm talking about when you're starting to do things on your own and, you know, you you're forced to just kind of look at things realistically and be like, yeah, maybe four eyes isn't the greatest. Yeah. Right. Um, but again, that's all growth. Right. Um, and, and especially in something like music, right. If you're going to stay stagnant and you're going to be like, no, this is the best, this is the best, this is the best. And you're not willing to hear that feedback and run with it. You know, you're going to be stuck really quickly. Like I, I, you know, I did a little bit of music and I remember, uh, back in the day, you know, before, uh, there were a lot of websites where you could post music. Um, my friends and I used to, when we were in a band, we used to use this website. It, it was actually called garage band, but then, you know, I think maybe they lost some sort of you know, legal battle to garage band on, you know, the, right. the whole uh, Apple, whatever. Um, but you, the way you would get your music up there uh, is that you would have to either pay like 20 bucks per song to upload it. So other people could listen to it or, oh, and only people that were registered could listen to it. Or you would have to review 20 songs of other artists in order to post one song. Right. And to me, that was like the biggest like, oh, cool. I'll just do it. That's free. I, I love writing and I can give fair reviews on this and everything like that. And I remember putting my band's songs up and just being so like, you know, uh, what do you call it? Like blindsided by, you know, how people are on the Internet. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially musicians. Right. They're the most opinionated jerks out there. And I'm just like. Hey, we're a bunch of 17 year old kids making music. I'm thinking in my head, like, wow, this is the greatest stuff ever. And then you, you know, put the songs up there. It's like, well, oh, the quality's crap. And then, you know, this is, you know, the, the drummer doesn't know what he's doing. I was a drummer, right? You know, the singer can't sing. And it's like, whoa, what the hell did I spend, you know, right. all this time, you know, uh, being nice and, and giving other people, you know, uh, praise on their music. You know, it's, it's, it can be one of those things uh, where feedback can be kind of crushing, right? Um, what's maybe some of the best feedback you've received and some of the worst feedback you've received? Uh, I mean, kind of depends on your definition of best and worst, right? So, I mean, the hardest feedback for me to receive, um, I had just finished my first album, uh, like the Four Eyes one, and... Um, I was sending it out to a bunch of different um, producers that I followed on Twitter mm -hmm. and just looking for people to do remixes and wanted to do a remix album, which ended up doing and it turned out awesome. Mm -hmm. One of the guys that I sent it to, he was one of the first producers, like underground producers I had started following when I first got into music. Mm -hmm. And he came back to me and in very polite terms, basically told me my mix downs were shit. <laughs> and it was devastating because I like I just was thought I, you know they were so good it just sounded like I was doing what everyone else did mm -hmm. but you know I kind of just I, I tried to ignore it and tried to just you know and then dropped the album and listening to it on Spotify you know one of those songs coming on after one of my favorite songs that inspired me Mm -hmm. And just hearing the difference in it mm -hmm. just was like, oh, oh, I get it now, mm -hmm. which was, again, very, it was very demoralizing. I I don't think I touched Ableton for like three months after that, yeah. because I just, I had to take a break from it. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, that was what motivated me to, okay, like, I don't know what I'm doing. I have to admit that I have no idea what I'm doing with audio engineering so let me learn. And so I went and took a class at a production school called SLDP, Salt Lake DJ and Production. And, you know, it's just small school is like above a wedding dress shop, uh, but they've they've got a really nice studio built in it. They've got mm -hmm. um, the uh, the Nexus 3000s. Um, so they, they've got they've got solid gear. And the classes were really small. My class was mm -hmm. like, you know, four or five people. Mm -hmm. So it was very one-on-one -on -one and I learned so much. It took me miles ahead of where I was. But 
the more I learned and the more I developed my uh, an ear is now the more I critique my own music because of it. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's very double edged. So that in, in a lot of ways, that was the best and the worst feedback. I it's see. the hardest to uh, hardest pill to swallow, but the best for me. Mm -hmm. well, maybe sometimes we need to get slapped across the face. Right. Yeah. Um, because yeah, you, you know, again, like it, when it's so personal, it's like, this is mine. Like right. I did this, like, it's great, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's why there's, there's different levels to this, right? People that have been doing it for a while, you know, maybe if they're not the nicest or anything like that, they, they, they kind of know what they're talking about sometimes. And maybe, you know, uh, it, 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 it's important to even listen to those not so nice comments every now and then, mm -hmm. um, moving on. Right. I don't have like a great understanding of, you know, electronic music and things like that. Like, I'll be honest, and this is going to sound like, oh, well, you're just not a fan of that music. You're you're a jerk, you know, but I always used to just be like, I don't understand how people can just go watch, you know, somebody who's like a DJ, right? Like, to me, it's just like, okay, so they press play and they stand there and they dance. I'm like, it's not a live show, right? Like, I'm, I'm big into like, you know, uh, watching, you know, musicians on the guitar and the drums, like you, you get to ad lib a lot and things like that. And you know, the energy is a lot bigger, at least I think. Right. Um, but again, you know, having done a lot of like security for like raves and, and things like that, I'm like, but there's an audience. Right. And, and, and there's people that want to see this live, you know, so talk to me a little bit about that, man, because I know, again, it's not my cup of tea per se, but I can acknowledge that, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of wrong there. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, I wouldn't even say you're necessarily wrong because, again, it, it's not everyone's cup of tea, which that was hard for me to understand when I first got into it because I just was like, this is the most incredible thing. Like, these shows are insane. How does not uh, like how do people not just love this mm. over the years? Now I understand it and it's a lot. Um, A lot more of the art is in. The production as a whole i think so mm -hmm. with the lighting and the lasers and the visuals uh, these are all things that i've kind of dipped my toes in um and learned a little bit about and learning the art behind all of that and you put it all together with the music and you know it, there isn't so much of a live performance it really is a lot more about song selection as a dj mm. but we are also getting a lot more people who do bring in uh live elements and i think that always adds you know that that missing element and it, it's something i want to get a lot more into as well but you know it, it's interesting because i'm kind of the opposite and it's only been within the last couple of years that i've realized how much i love you know a more traditional band or um just more of the live element. Um, I've been listening to a lot more uh, kind of just like indie rock now. Um, mm. And that that's just kind of become my cup of tea, even though it never was. Yeah. What's, uh, you know, because you moved to, to Texas, right? To San Antonio. Uh, what's the electronic mu music scene look like there, man? Because I know like, you know, music's really big, like in Austin and things like that. Um, but was that strategic? Like, Hey, I want to come over here because maybe the scene's a little bit better than it is or not better, like, uh, more lively than it is. like in say Utah or something like that. Yeah. So, I mean, the strategy was to get close to Austin because Austin definitely has the better scene. There really actually isn't much of an electronic scene in San Antonio at all. Um, mm -hmm. I've, I've seen a couple underground shows, but it's a lot more like drum and bass or. Um, like techno just not really my sound I I'd want to go to some of these but um, not shows that I would play but the thing about Austin is it is not cheap mm. and one of the biggest reasons I you know always wanted to move to Texas is because I'm like it's so much cheaper out here Utah was getting so expensive mm. and so it was get out of the snow go somewhere cheaper and you know, if it's close to Austin, Austin has a much better music scene than Utah, which to 
credit Utah, Salt Lake is doing some pretty cool things. Like they, they're really putting themselves on the map. So um, that scene's growing, you know, at a healthy rate out there as well. But San Antonio just was the, okay, it's cheap and it's only an hour and a half from Austin. Right. right. So it's, it's very commutable. Um, I can still very much, you know, push in the Austin scene, but kind of get the comfort of living in San Antonio. And, you know, I, I love it here. I, I'm hoping that they do end up building a train between the cities. <laughs> if they did that, I don't know if I'd leave San Antonio because I've, I've really come to love it out here. Nice. Um, but you know, ultimately if I, if I move, it's going to be closer to Austin. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like, what's, uh, what are some things like, you know, that are coming up in the pipeline for you, man? What's, what's in the near future for Atonics? Um, so I've got, uh, another single dropping at the end of this month. Um, that one's, uh, part of my rise and shine project. So that's a duo project I've got with, uh, my friend that just moved back to Salt Lake um it's it, it's where the experimental music really derives from for me um he makes some really incredible stuff he's been a lot more alternative and indie rock and acoustic stuff and really wanted to get into the electronic side and so we started making music together and it just was so different because he's he's so creative and it really pulled me out of my box um so that's uh, going to be the next single. And then the rest of the year, we're dropping an EP in Waterfall. So it'll come out one uh, as a single at a time. And that's a Rise and Shine project as well. Um, so uh, essentially, it, it'll come out as like a collab between Rise and Shine, Autonix, and uh, Arcadia Light is his name. So um, that's essentially the plan for this year. Um, Next year, have a few songs planned. I do want to drop an album, even though that's really not the move, especially in the electronic yeah. scene. I want to do it because I want to do it. Yeah. Um, but next year is when I think I'm going to start to really try to get back into performing. Mm. Good, good, good. And then, you know, uh, yeah, that's kind of crazy how albums don't really exist anymore. They're not a thing. Um, right? Like, you know, I used to be really excited about like, you know, going to the mall and buying a CD, right? Um, oh, I can't wait for this new CD. And then now it's just like, this artist has a new song on Spotify. It's like, hmm. But what about, you know, a whole album? Right. A few months later, this artist has a new song on Spotify. Like, hmm. You know, it's, it's I don't know. It, it must be like uh, the way people process things now. It's so like, you know, much like... Uh, I get an attention span thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. Really? And I think an attention span thing and also an algorithm thing. Um, I, mm. I was kind of talking about this, just the way the algorithm rewards you. Um, it really makes it feel uh, as an artist to become relevant. Uh, you have to always have the spotlight on you. So you always have to put out a hit. Mm -hmm. Every song just needs to be a hit. Yeah, And albums aren't really meant for that. Yeah. Albums are supposed to be a full piece of work and you might get some songs that are kind of abstract out of context, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of the beauty of them, right? But again, people don't really have the attention span to listen through a whole album unless it's, you know, a very established name um, mm -hmm. or you get the real music lovers. And so me dropping my album is that it's geared towards them of like, hey, anyone who wants to listen through the full thing, like, great, here's this. I'm going to put out a few of the songs as singles that I feel like should get a little more of a spotlight. But um, yeah, yeah, I agree. It's it's the way the algorithm works and the way that people's minds work now. Yeah, for sure. All right, man. So real quick, let me, let me get some uh, shot out of a cannon here, right? So let's say, you know, uh, name... Uh, you know, maybe three of your, your top favorite uh, artists in electronic music right now. I know you mentioned you got some indie favorites right now. Men let's, let's, let's hear maybe like three of your top favorite artists in like electronic music. Um, So I would say Champagne Drip now has shot up there. I recently saw him live and that 
that that puts him up there. Um, Rufus DeSoul is a really big one that's kind of been a newer favorite of mine uh, over the last few years. I yeah. think they'll forever stay in my top artists of all time. Yeah. And mm, it's hard hard breaking it down to a third. Sure. Um, I would probably have to go with hello world all right, all right. Uh, they're very experimental great great producer three influences that you you know regardless of genre say this is what makes my music you know you know uh, my music um so seven lions was my original influence uh seven lions and adventure club um Seven Lines more for the music, Adventure Club more for how they did their sets. Um, and then Zed's Dead, I think, um, has been the most consistent one throughout my entire musical journey. Okay. And then uh, maybe uh, three artists that you would want to, you know, perform alongside in like a festival or a concert. Oh, that one's tough, man. Yeah. I mean, as far as just back to backs go, mm -hmm. um, I would say T Tate B. I think would be really cool. I think we could do some really cool stuff. Um, I really think it'd be fun with. Oh, <laughs> probably Jaws. Jaws would be one that I'd really. I think I'd really have a lot of fun with. And for third, um, as I shot out oh, of the cannon, it's on the yeah, spot. Yeah, man, right? that's hard. <laughs> I, I'm going to say Champagne and Drip again because he right. he's been kind of what I've been gearing my sound a little more towards. Cool. And we'll final one right here, right? So, like, let's say you know, like, you get those suggestions like on Spotify, right? Spotify, right? Uh, shot out of a cannon. Three, you know, three artists, right? You might find me on a playlist with. Oh, uh, maybe take B. Um, Rise and Shine, you'll probably find with like Sharks. We do a lot more color base with Rise and Shine. Mm -hmm. um, and then back to Atonics. Um, hopefully Zed's dead one day. You know, mm -hmm. I... I uh, that's a goal of mine is I'd like to get a dead beats release. So right, uh, right. The, potentially Zed's dead. <laughs> okay. See, and I, I'm like, just so, you know, people are listening, they're like, okay, let me get a sense of what this sounds like and what, what I'm about to check out, you know? Um, so good, good. Yeah, man. Um, other than that, you know, I just want to see like uh, any, any uh, social media you want to throw out there for people to check you out, follow you. Yeah. Uh, Autonics underscore music on Pretty much everything I do not do Twitter or X anymore. I, what the hell I'm, is that anymore, right? I'm so done with it. I just I just cut it out. I've just decided like I I don't care to get any exposure on that. Real people aren't even on there anyway. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's it's just a dumpster fire. Like um, I, I never understood it. Uh, I, I think I, I I I tried it for like you know just because everybody has it. I'm like all right, let me let me let me see what it's all about. I'm like I don't know how to use this shit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but so autonics underscore music on Instagram is probably my, but uh, not even probably that's, that's my biggest one. And also just the one I feel most comfortable on. Um, mm -hmm. You can follow me on TikTok as well. I do not have any posts out yet. I'm still yeah. trying to kind of decide the direction I want to go with my reels. Um, and then YouTube is just autonics. Um, cool. That's where you can find out. Uh, I'm putting up a, another similar visualizer for this next song and you know at least for all of the rest of them and definitely until i have something else yeah man well really cool anything else you want to throw out there to the podcast world before we close it up Ah, uh, um no don't don't forget to look at your own shadow we all got one it's all right to not be afraid of it profound man profound <laughs> all right well it's been a lot of fun i uh, appreciate having you on man and 
you know, lots of like uh, luck and success, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you. For sure. For everybody listening at home, I appreciate you. Thank you. Fuck you and good night. <laughs>